So this is part Walter Wallace event and part count the vote. Fuck yeah, Philly. Way to be out. Hey mods, if anybody pisses you off, just time them out. Don't uh, don't worry about you know getting somebody out. Almost everybody. I think everybody has a mask on too. I don't know if the guard is over there still. I'll go check. Yeah, they have everything fenced off over here where the guard is staging. A bunch of cops over this way too. There's a lot of them. At least they're wearing body cameras this time.
Hopefully the internet connection stays well enough. Uh, if anybody out there is a streamer, go ahead and use the video too. Um, you know, share, share the stream on Twitter. If you can, share it in some discords. Make sure you know that uh, Philly's putting some people out to get the vote counted. Thank you, Blin and Blin. I hope they don't block the internet. Also, let me know if, um, if there's a Trump counter event anywhere. The National Guard's been here for a long time. been here for weeks. on us in Philadelphia, yes. locally, yes. right? So uh, on October 26th, Walter Wallace was murdered. And since then, our, our democratic rights have been under attack. A Black Lives Matter activist, Anthony Smith, has been arrested. Whoa. Trump has already bragged. Whoa. Trump has already bragged about the extrajudicial killing and murder of a Black Lives Matter activist in Kenosha, Kenosha Washington. And now he's threatening to steal the vote. So as we know, we are calling for community control of the police to have investigatory hiring and firing power over these police forces. And why do we need that? And why is that connected to the election? Because when Trump tries to steal the election via these politicized courts, who is going to be the oppressive force that enacts that will? that enacts the disenfranchisement of democratic rights away from the people who have worked hard and need them the most, which are black people, Latino people, working class people. And so we know that we have to stand up and fight now. We have to stand up and fight now 
to protect these democratic rights and to reassert our democratic control over the institutions of this country. That includes the electoral process. That includes the police force and that we have to, and that calls for reimagining what public safety looks like and what it means. And we can see the connection between the oppressive police state and the far right in Kenosha, Washington with police forces working together with far right militias who are encouraging people to vote for Trump, encouraging and, and helping to engender this theft of the Democratic right, long run Democratic right. So as I said, we are here to call for not only the funding of police by 50% and reinvesting that money into education, public services, housing, good paying jobs, reinserting our control over the oppressive police state that we live in. And the truths that enact the will of the ruling class. And we can already see the oppression continue in Philadelphia by the same police force surrounding a black mother, beating her car, destroying her car, ripping her out of the car and the vehicle in front of her infant child, and then posting. Ah, uh, they're all count the vote hoodies. If they count all the votes, Biden wins. Thank you for the raid. Can anybody find um, find if there's any Trump uh, counter protests around anywhere? So, we have to build independent politics. We have to build working class politics. The demon machine just raid. Our own independent party. Thank you. Third party. Thank you, demon. So we have Kendra Brooks, who is going to be speaker, who ran as a third party candidate. She did not. Brooks. 
I really appreciate the rate, Demon. Share the stream on Twitter if you can, everybody, and, and in the Discord if you about. want to. That's why we're here, and we're going to continue to fight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kendra. Let's give her another round of applause. And it's very important, as she said, that we come out here and we work as a mass movement, as Zoe said, and we have to build a political party that is not afraid of mass movements, of ones that will turn against them, and that's why we need to build an alternative to the Democratic Party to fight for our interests. And we're gonna have, we're gonna keep moving right along, and we're gonna have our next speaker, Zebediah, a member of Socialist Alternative, come up to speak, so please welcome him, welcome them as they come up to the stage. All right, talk about dinner somewhere else. Count every vote. 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 Somebody can time out for screen. Count every vote. Yeah. So let me hear you. When democracy is under attack, what do we do? I said, what do we do? Damn right. Good 
evening, everyone. My name is Zeb, and I'm a member of Socialist Alternative. All of 2020 has been full of historic events. This election is undoubtedly one of them, and is incredibly important. Why, you ask, is this election so important? Well, in part, because it's happening in the same year as a new wave in the Black Lives Matter which fights for justice for people like George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and countless others, including Walter Wallace, who was recently murdered by the police in West Philly in front of his own mother during a mental health crisis, what he needed was the ambulance that his father and his family had actually called for him. But the city sent out the police instead. And when people went out into the street to oppose this last couple of protests, we were repressed again and again. That summer, they threw tear gas and shot rubber bullets at us while we were running for our lives. More recently, the feds arrested an innocent community activist, Ant Smith, who is facing nine years in prison. And police tried to use a photo of the baby of a black woman who was pulled from her car and beaten senseless by police officers as propaganda to cast a negative light on protesters and the movement that the people have created. The police with support from this city's democratic establishment, have tried to use the murder of Walter Wallace as a reason to further consolidate their power and call for an increase in funding. They claim that, oh, if we had funding for tasers, we wouldn't have had to shoot him. We wouldn't have had to kill him. This is absolute nonsense. Their job, is to, um, their job is to punish people who stand up for racial justice and scare black working class people into submission. We should be taking away their funding by at least 50%. We should be taking away their military grade weapons. We should be taking away their riot gear. And we should be reinvesting that money into what? Into housing, affordable housing, into the schools the schools that close down every single year and into the lives of the people who live in the communities in the city of Philadelphia. They want to scare us into submission, but we're not going to let it work. Let's hear loud and clear. Free Ant! Free Ant! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Justice for Walter Wallace! Justice for Walter Wallace! Yeah, that's damn right. Let's not forget that this election is also happening in the midst of a global pandemic, leaving a quarter of a million dead and many more sick and hospitalized with no true end in sight. This health crisis is coupled with an economic depression, with unemployment and evictions at levels we haven't seen in this country since the Great Depression in the 1930s. It's 2020, people. Millions of working class people are now are newly in poverty and we have to do something about this. There is a severe lack of democracy in this nation. The president has been openly racist, sexist, xenophobic, transphobic, and anti-worker for his entire four-year term in office. He openly says that he will refuse to leave office if he loses and has already made statements trying to delegitimize mail-in ballots and stop them from being counted. Count every vote! Count every vote! I said, count every vote! Count every vote! Count every vote! This lack of democracy is not right. new. Women, black people, Native Americans, and many others have had to fight tooth and nail for their right to vote. Even so, brutal voter suppression instigated by Republicans continues especially targeting the black working class, and the Democrats have done little to nothing to concretely fight it. Formerly incarcerated people have been arrested again for trying to register to vote or for casting their ballot. And thousands of polling stations have been closed, resulting in people needing to travel even further to vote and finding much longer lines when they get there. Which, especially in the midst of a global pandemic where you can't stand closer than six feet from each other, is not safe. It's a death sentence for us to go out and vote. 
The current system leaves us no real options. We're given a choice between two corporate parties that want to continue destroying the environment, funding police that brutally murder black people in the street, and refuse to budge on universal health care even in the middle of a global health crisis. This is not a real choice. Both parties prioritize profits for the 1% over people's lives. According to a survey taken in April, 70% of voters support Medicare for All. This includes a lot of Republicans. Quarter voters passed a $15 minimum wage yesterday, even while voting for Trump. This proves that the progressive platform put forth by Bernie Sanders would have beat Trump in a landslide. But the Democratic establishment would rather lose to the Republicans than put forward a candidate that would build a mass movement to threaten the ruling, the ruling classes, precious status quo, or to defend our, the people's, democratic rights. Yeah, James. The it's Democrats a lot safer to be outdoors, actually, than it is to be indoors. I can't believe that's coming from you. Shut the fuck up. In the year 2000, during the Bush Al Gore election, the Democrats wanted to play nice while Republicans mobilized and used the Supreme Court to stop votes being counted. We see the failures of the two-party system clear as day right here in Philadelphia, where the Democratic mayor and city council have utterly failed to respond to the Black Lives Matter movement or take any action on police brutality whatsoever. If we really want our votes to mean something, we're going to have to keep fighting tooth and nail for what we want ourselves. We need masses of working class people in the streets demanding at minimum that every single vote be counted. We must demand, not ask for, demand better choices. Candidates who actually represent working people. For this, we need a new party of the working class. We need unions, we need the labor unions to take this up on, to take up this call too. Workers run the economy. We run the economy and we can bring it to a screeching halt if we want to. If they won't count every vote, we should shut the whole damn system down! Remember, in 2019, it was the threat of a general strike from flight attendants and air traffic controllers that finally forced Trump to end the government shutdown. We also have to take this fight into the schools and our workplaces. We need strikes and student walkouts across the country. There's a way contingent that came out today with members of the audience. Yeah, this is an event for Walter Wallace in Philadelphia. It's not just one organization.
How you doing? I have like 140 people watching. Do you want to tell them why they should join the social club? I have like 140 people in my stream, and uh, I'm in the DSA, um, not social club, but they're all going to be, uh, you know, like good with you. Do you want to tell them why they should join the social club? Okay, yeah. Sure. That's okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So there we are. I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. I don't know how we do it. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, why should, uh, what, what should people know about the social cell Um, yeah, hi, I'm with Social Alternative, so we're out here in Philadelphia saying we be, um, fighting, like, tooth and nail for all votes to be counted. We know that this system of capitalism that is trying to get our votes, like, specifically in Pennsylvania and nationally, like, the system that is trying to not let our votes get counted, that is the same system that has been, um, like, ruining our lives for a long time, the same system that is evicting people in a global pandemic, the same system that keeps the healthcare system a for-profit system, trying to make money on like our um, like health behalf, and the same system that killed Walter Wallace Jr. in West Philadelphia last week. And so yeah, Socialist Alternative says that we need to be fighting um, like now, every day, we need to be in the streets protesting, and we need to be fighting in our workplaces. We need to be um, like coordinating with our coworkers and potentially like calling for strikes or having just workplace actions where we um, like walk out because like we know that we have power as the working class um, and we can um, like we have power in our workplaces when we are organized in the streets in our schools um, in our workplaces and um, yeah so join Socialist Alternative um, you can go to our website um, at socialistalternative.org to learn more about us and how you can um, get involved. Party. Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, do you know of any other events that are going on in the city this week? In the city this um, week? Yeah, so actually, um, like later tonight, there's an action um, also in Center City, um, specifically um, calling for justice for um, Walter Wallace Jr., who was murdered by the police last week in Philadelphia. Um, and yeah, calling for um, like justice for all people that are being killed by this racist capitalist policing system. And I, um, there are other actions planned, but I don't have the details of now. Yeah, amazing. Uh, do you have any questions for me or for them at all? Or yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. What do you guys think about um, like this moment, or like how do you think we're gonna count every vote or fight to count every vote? I, I haven't. Uh, I know that they're trying to do something on the seventh. There's a big labor uh, organization that's gonna yeah. be taking place. So um, they're, you know, they did up some T-shirts for you know count every vote, count every vote, protect the democracy. Um, but I came down early today to go into. Um, convention center i have a press pass so they let me in but you can't really see the vote and um i think i just saw that trump declared that he won pa oh, about I, like about like 45 that. minutes ago he tweeted out that he was like trying to claim pa wow. so i don't exactly know what the dsa is going to be doing i know that they're going to be at the event on the 7th i saw one or two people here um for it and um we're trying to put together some anti-austerity bills and, you know, trying to raise money because uh, the city's going bankrupt. I mean, they're cutting public services, they're cutting public housing. So it's kind of just the same thing that you're doing. Try to keep agitating, yeah. try to keep, keep getting people going. Yeah, like, yeah, like the city like, passed this like horrible austerity budget like yeah. a couple months ago um, and is like putting more money into the police and less money into housing, less money um, into our schools. And it's like we know that like if we tax the rich, if we tax Comcast, if we tax Penn, who right now they don't pay any taxes, yeah. we can take that money from the rich and put it into the hands of working class people. And get rid of the abatement. The yeah, and get rate. rid of the tax abatement that like lets these big businesses not um, not pay taxes. Yeah, I really appreciate it. I'm gonna show them your uh, paperwork here. Yeah. Thank you so much. So when we
Thank you so much. We need democratic, militant, member driven unions that can close the class and women at work. We need unions that fight systemic racism, sexism, and solidarity. We need unions that stand against police brutality and demand that those precious resources be redirected to meet the needs of the poor and working class people for housing, health care, union jobs, and environmental restoration. We need unions that will stand together to say no to a deadly reopening of schools and beyond that to rebuild the schools our students deserve. I invite you all to join the Caucus of Working Educators at 4 o'clock in front of 440 North Broad on Friday to prevent and stop a deadly reopening of Philadelphia public schools, Friday at 4 o'clock. And we need a labor movement that not only fights to keep the democracy we have, but expands and deepens it. We need a labor movement that stands up to Republicans, Democrats, and their billionaire donors. We need a labor movement that works to build an independent party of the working class, run by and for workers of all races, genders, sexualities, and immigration statuses. Because folks, what we got right now ain't working. Like Bernie Sanders said, if there's going to be a class war, it's about time the working class started winning. Today, we defend the democracy we have. Tomorrow, we fight for the democracy we deserve. Palante siempre, palante. Oh, yeah, let's give them another round of applause for that awesome speech. Once again, highlighting the need, the failure of the Democratic Party to fight for what we need. In the middle of a pandemic, the Democratic presidential candidate said that he would veto a bill that crossed his desk that would give health care to every man, woman, and child in this country despite their economic needs. That is not good enough. That is not good enough. And to continue on, we're going to bring up a speaker from an organization that is fighting for health care for all. Let's welcome Kareem Nathan from Put People First as he comes to the stage. I know this guy. Right. I've gone to I've gone to book club with him before. All right, we just have a little bit of technical difficulty. So to keep the energy high, right? We're gonna lead a chant, but also we're gonna take this time and I wanna pitch. We've been talking about independent worker organizations, independent political organizations, away from the Democrats, building political power bases that are unafraid to take part in social movements based on racial equality. Gender equality. I don't know. Sexual, oh, I am. Uh, You're all going to have to tell me if there's a and counter, all the, and counter all protest. All the that capitalism uses to exploit us and to, to cause discord. We have tables from Socialist Alternative with our papers, sign up materials, and we are an organization that's out here fighting. So if you're interested in doing the work and being an organizer, please check out our tables at the side of this event. But now let's uh, hear from Kareem. Thank you. Thank you. I am uh, Kareem. I'm part of Put People First PA. We are a grassroots statewide organization rooted in the poor and the working class. We organize for health care as a human right. Put People First is part of the Poor People's Campaign, a call for national, a national call for moral revival. We believe the right to vote and the right to have our vote counted are key to building working class power. But we also believe our vote is important not simply to elect one corporatist power over party over another, but as part of a larger project to unite and build our class. We believe democracy for the poor and for the dispossessed cannot be boiled down to a choice between these two parties which have conspired over decades to create the neoliberal hellscape that gave rise to Donald Trump in the first place. Democracy for the poor, for the dispossessed, for the working class means having the ability and the power to fundamentally change our conditions. It means standing up for basic human rights which have been forsaken by both parties. 
These rights include the right to housing, the right to safety from police and state violence, and the right to health care. We stand here as part of a nonviolent Medicaid army that is fighting against the commodification of health care on all fronts. We reject the assault on Medicaid by Donald Trump, the selling off of hospitals by private equity, the program of austerity and privatization in health care that have been presided over by both parties. We reject the, the attack uh, on Medicaid by Donald Trump, but we also reject the anti-democratic re rhetoric of corporate Democrats who present health care as a commodity which must be made more affordable. Because as long as health care is bought and sold as a commodity and not provided as a basic human right, it will never be affordable to the poor. A human right like housing or health care should not have to be affordable. It should be free at the point of service to everyone. This is the overwhelming Go ahead, position another. of poor and working class people in this country. And democracy for the working class means acknowledging and enacting the will of the people when it comes to a living wage, when it comes to the right to live with dignity, when it comes to the right to health care. You can see from here, just a few blocks down, is Hahnemann, which served this city for generations. It functioned as a public good. It served the public interest. It provided emergency and medical and mental health services for thousands upon thousands of poor and working class people in this city, many of whom were on Medicaid. That lack of mental health services contributed to the death of Walter Wallace in Philly and to Ricardo Munoz in Somebody Lancaster, time out. Well, PA. Right. Both were killed by state violence, the blunt edge of a system which gives zero fucks about our life. When Hahnemann closed in 2019, there was no vote. There was no referendum. There was no public inquiry. It was closed not by the will of the people, but by the will of one man, Joel Friedman, a healthcare capitalist in California and his investors. Its closure and its continual shuddering in the face of a pandemic is an affront to the will of this community and the will of this city, which it has served for 150 years. Hospital closures like Hahnemann are a symptom of a profit-based healthcare system propped up by Democrats and Republicans alike. These hospital closures are not unique to Philly. They're happening across the state and across this country, in both red and blue districts. They're an attack on the entire working Thanks, class, urban and rural, white, black, and brown, old and young. Only by uniting the working class across these lines of divi division and against medical capitalism, which is our common enemy, can we hope to build a truly powerful and democratic working class movement. So no matter the results of this election, we will continue to fight on the grassroots level across the state in places like Johnstown and Altoona and Lancaster and Philly. We will continue to fight in a statewide, nonviolent Medicaid army to ensure health care is a human right. We will continue to build working class power, to build our base, to fight for our votes to be counted, to fight not only against voter suppression, but against all affronts by the ruling class to the will of the people. Join us at PutPeopleFirstPA.org. Yeah! If anybody likes my content, you can uh, follow me on Twitter, you can subscribe on YouTube, or you can give a donation Thank you everyone. My We're going to keep account. it moving very quickly. Right? We've talked about a number of things today. We've had a number of speakers. Now we're going to put that cross-racial solidarity that we talked about that's necessary in order to build uh, in order to build a mass movement into action by marching to the Black Philly Radical Collectors event in support of Walter Wallace. Then to start that, right, we're going to start, we're going to chant, we're going to start marching. Black Lives Matter! 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 Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter.
Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Chant free and free and.
was about to cop that bike. Um, the channel does uh, run on tips, so if anybody does want to support the work that I do, either in the studio or out of the studio, um, go ahead and give a small tip. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for coming to join us. We got a we got a, a, a coalition of unions and socialist alternative and uh, who else is there? Move on.
few different organizations. We're gonna have to go check and see if there's anything going on near the convention center. Can anybody check and find out if there is a counter protest to this at the convention center? that to me base cupcake. Alright, we're gonna terribly afraid of heights. I don't even like being this high off the ground. Thank you all for the host. A midnight minute and hi everybody thank you all for being here I appreciate it Thank you all for the follows and the hosts and the retweets and everything. I appreciate it.
That's my backpack. That's my backpack. It's a little cleaner than mine is. amazing out there. Tell me where there's a counter protest, I'll go. But you just have to tell me what street to go to.
are they moving so fast? Did, did the search just raid? Did the search just raid? Thank you, Lance. If you did. Thank you, Lance. I appreciate it. Let's go, Lance.
Thank you everybody for all the follows. And thank you Lance for the shout out. Appreciate it. Sorry man. I'm trying to find a spot where I get a good connection. I'm fine, yeah, 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 I'm all good. I just fucked up a little bit, that's all. Ah, nice, the connection's good again. Perfect. Where's your body camera? Where's your body camera? Where's your body camera? Where's your body camera? I see you have a holder for it. Uh, the camera's gonna fall for a second.
put it up on YouTube. Can somebody do exclamation mark YouTube and exclamation mark Twitter? Thank you. And if anybody does want to give a small donation, my channel does run on donations, so I accept PayPal, I have a Patreon, and I accept cryptocurrency. Uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm your host, Touring News. I really appreciate you, Lance, for bringing a bunch of people over. Thank you so much. What's your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? No, you get out of here. See you later. Bye bye. Might have been, I don't know. Sorry for the uh, camera for a moment here, hang on. Alright, I'm gonna try to get back up to the front of the line. How you doing? Yeah, I live in Brewery Town in Philadelphia.
We're going uh, east on east on Broad. East on Broad. Well, I'll tell you one thing, it smells good right now. We must be near some kind of restaurant. All right, then I'm on East Market. B. McMill, you know I'm not very smart on basic things. Uh, what's the crowd size? Man, two or three thousand? Maybe? Yeah, maybe, maybe two thousand? I think. There's a lot of people here. Oh nice, we're coming up to the Liberty Bell. All right, so we're coming up to Constitution Avenue and the Liberty Bell. Yeah, there's another group up ahead. I, uh, I don't think I can run anymore, but I'm gonna catch up to the front. Well, I have one more, one more job. Oh, thank you, Polygodipus. I'll, uh, I'll find the donut. I really appreciate it. One body camera. One out of all of them with a the body camera. Oh, this is awesome. So down there is Liberty Bell. Thank you, Polly, for a uh, $25 dono. Thank you, El Guero, for a $5 dono. I really appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for the hosts and the follows.
That's what I need. That's the way to get around. I don't know what street I'm on. I'm at the Liberty Bell. Can we have a silence on the drummer, please? We are still moving. We have a short distance to our final destination. But we want to make two things clear before we go. You might have heard us say the chant, free in. Say free in. 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 It is our duty to fight for our 
our freedom. Now, we just found out that the city finally released the footage, literally in the course of our march. And we want to be clear that you don't have to watch the film to know that the Philadelphia police murdered Walter Wallace Jr. To know that Walter Wallace Jr. should still be with us here, right now, in this very moment. There is absolutely no excuse for someone who is disabled, someone who is having a mental health crisis, to be gunned down. There is no videotaped evidence that will ever allow us to say that their life does not matter, that they do not deserve to live. So let us be clear, watch the film, circulate the film if you need to, but the fact remains that Walter Wallace Jr. should still be here, we still continue to shout, long live Walter Wallace! I think after all the vote watching, we all needed a night like this. So, I have to thank Philadelphia for putting it on.
into a car. Dr. Buena Buen, don't hesitate to time people out if they piss you off. Just get them out of here. Thank you, Mark.
They know where they're going, Jade. Don't worry. They planned out the route. Shout me out on your channel, I really appreciate it. I've already walked about 12 miles today and I um, did not eat enough. I mean, I've got a ton of food in my backpack, but I don't want to take my mask off around this many people to eat. And I don't really want to take my mask off to drink water either, so.
Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! We just want to thank y'all for being on the show today, y'all. That's right. We want to thank you because the unity that's required for justice comes from the hands and the hearts and the minds of many. It comes from our ability to unite on multiple angles across experiences and neighborhoods. When you show up, when you show up, that allows us to build people's power. All power to the people. 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 No power to these kids. That's right. And we want to make sure, because for those that don't know, we want to wake up somebody who lives on this corner. Some of y'all know there's a man who is the so-called leader of this city. So-called. Everybody from the mayor to all of his neighbors understand that the people demand justice. Is that right? Yeah. I, I want the mayor to know. So I think we're at the, the mayor's people house. Is that right? Yeah. And then we will come to the mayor's house for as long as we need to. I don't know, it's rude. You will be uncomfortable. You will hear our voice. You will hear our power. You will hear our strength. You will see our spirit. You will see our body.
Hang on a second.
79, Aquara Tribune, is that Philadelphia is number one. It's the poorest of all the large But there's no remedy. There's no redress. There's no help. There's no assistance. All we can do is be a number one.
you got a simple question for Kenny. The people of community, the people of Philadelphia did not elect McNesby, the head of the FOP, the mayor of Philadelphia. They elected Kenny. If the Philadelphia police want to elect McNesby to be their leader, to be their voice, then that's their prerogative. They can do that. But the people of Philadelphia elected you to be the mayor. Who do you take your marching orders from? Or do you take your orders from McNesby? Do you have any backbone? That's the question that we have. Have a good night, the lazy gene. See you another day. You're gone. When he was on the block having a mental health crisis, actually the police came two times before those cops came to kill Walter Wallace. And the community sent them back. Walter Wallace needed mental health intervention. And he didn't get there. He got 14 bullets searing through his body. The response has been the police department needs more tasers. Fuck that. Fuck that. That's some bullshit. See you later, Zenander. You can get a timeout too. Because, because all of us know that had those officers had tasers, the results would have been the same. The, police, the Philadelphia police use of force policy would have authorized those police officers to kill Walter Wallace, regardless if they had tasers or not. So that's something that we need to talk about, and that's something that we need to make clear. Because we don't need $14 million for more tasers when the police still have a use of force policy that regardless if they got tasers or whatever other so-called non-lethal munitions are in the arsenal, you're still going to get killed when they show up. That's the fact. Most of our people are asking for investment in our communities. We're asking for investment in mental health service. We're asking for more crisis intervention for at-risk youth. We're not asking for more money to go into the police. When people are advocating defunding the police, we're talking about funding our community. Yeah. Our community. Our community has been advocating this ever since Cecil B. Moore and thousands of other Young black students stood down, took to the streets. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. We need mental health on every block in our Bye bye, Lazy Jean. The city clerk president, Dow Clark, advocates to give the police. Every time the police act up or do something, the response is to give them some more fucking money. What is that? So what you said, huh? Where's the accountability? When Clark advocates for more funding to go to the police for tasers, our response is we don't need that shit. The community's response don't is we don't need into that it. shit. Don't worry, everybody. We're here for something else. To hire not more bureaucrats, but more people from the community. More people from the block like Walter Wallace did so. We could have acted as a crisis intervention for him. We could have been there when he needed help. We could be there for our youth out here on the streets who need help. And I'm not advocating some bootstraps, poop licking, pull yourselves up by your bootstrap self-help shit. I'm gonna make that shit clear. I ain't advocating more money to go into some patronage in our community that ain't gonna solve shit because we've been had that. Our communities have been governed by a patronage system that ain't been shit for us since Wolf and No Good Mayor became mayor of Philadelphia in the 1980s. So, as 
as I close, I'm gonna leave Kenny with that final message. Who you take your marching orders from? Who you take it from? The community? Or do you take it from McNesby? And if you want to continue taking your marching orders from McNesby, I can assure you that we're gonna to continue to be out here in these streets. These streets are gonna to continue to be lit, and Philadelphia is continue to be lit. This is just the start. This is just the start. I assure you that. And one last thing too. Right now, white supremacy is on its way out. It's fighting like a motherfucker to stay in power. Regardless of what goes down with this election, it don't matter how this shit play out. They gonna fight tooth and nail to stay in power. They hanging off of that cliff. And a motherfucker that's desperate is dangerous. So they hang it on by their nails. But I can assure you that however it plays out, they on their way out. What we got to do is make sure that while we on the edge of that cliff, we stop on their fucking finger. in the streets, we gonna rumble in the, in the courtroom, whatever. But they time is the fuck up. cover international news, um, but this was going on in Philly tonight, so I came down. Sorry about that. I think we're going west now, west on race. The guard is in the center city. The guard's not out here.
Bye bye, bye love boy. Bye. Bye bye, all of Trumpers are staging a protest at the convention tomorrow at 8 a.m. I'll be there. I will be there. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. If anybody knows of any Trump protests here in Philly, DM me, Touring News, hashtag 7953 on Discord, or Touring News 1 on Twitter. Bye-bye, Hill News Radio, your band. Shout out Socrates TV and Dr. Buena Buen and Carpe Pax and anybody else who is helping me out do Mari and who's been a friend of the channel for a long time. Shout yourselves out. No good cops in a racist system. 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 There's no good cops in a racist system. No good cops in a racist system. No good cops in a racist system. Yeah, they are. They know what they're doing.
Bye bye for tonight, we Mammoth Waffle. You got timed out just no now. No Stupid fucking question. It's a 10 minute timeout. You'll deal with it or you won't come back. I don't really care either way. If we don't get it, shut it down. 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 But if we don't get it, to the ground. If we don't get it, shut it down. Alright, see you later, Agent. You're gone too. See you later, Mega Chad. You're gone too. Bye bye, Ultimate Cue Ball, you're gone. Danny. If we recognize that it is our communities that keep us safe, we don't need these systems that are designed to murder black people, brown people, poor people. We don't need them to keep us safe. But before we close, we want to ground ourselves in where we are. Some of you 
might know this as Independence Mall. Some of you might have visited the Liberty Bell. But what you might not know is that to my left is a memorial to enslaved people that were held by the so-called founder of this country, George Washington. You can move. So when we say abolish these systems, we are not just talking about the police. We are not just talking about the prison. We are talking about all of the systems that have been designed to kill black people, to take our freedom, to rob native people of their land, to keep working people in bondage. Right, so please know that when we are talking about abolition, we are talking about the dismantling of all of these systems. We will be free! We will be free! Bye -bye, let's go. We will be free! 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 We are 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 free! Go home and love, go home safely. 